Hello, I'm Dr. Philip Rasco, a lung cancer surgeon in Houston, and I'm going to be discussing some basic information regarding lung cancer and lung cancer surgical options. I'm a thoracic surgeon in the Department of uh, Cardiothoracic and Vascular Surgery at the University of Texas Medical School uh, at Houston. Uh, I uh, care for patients and perform surgery at Memorial Hermann Hospital in the Texas Medical Center and the Memorial Hermann Southeast Hospital. I have no fin financial interest to disclose regarding this topic. The lungs are an integral part of the respiratory system. The right lung is slightly larger than the left lung in most patients. Uh, the right lung has three major divisions or lobes, the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and the lower lobe. The left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung as the heart takes up more space in the left chest. And as such, the left lung has only two lobes, an upper and lower lobe. Lung cancer begins in the cells which form lung tissue. Cancer cells are genetically abnormal. They divide more rapidly than usual cells, and their buildup results in a cancerous growth or tumor. These tumors can invade nearby tissues or organs. Lung cancer cells can also spread to other parts of the body by breaking away from the tumor and traveling through lymph vessels, lymph nodes, or blood vessels, and we term this metastasis. Lung cancer is the leading cancer killer of both men and women in the United States. There are approximately 225,000 new cases of lung cancer yearly in the United States. This is approximately 14% of all new cancer cases overall. Lung cancer uh, accounts for approximately 160,000 deaths in the United States a year, which is approximately 27% of all cancer deaths. As you can see from the bar graph on the right, lung cancer accounts for 160,000 deaths in the United States yearly, which is more than colorectal cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and pancreatic cancer combined. Of course, the most common risk factor for lung cancer is smoking cigarettes or other forms of tobacco. And over 90% of lung cancer patients are current or former smokers. Other risk factors include exposure to secondhand smoke, a family history of lung cancer, prior exposure to radiation therapy, or workplace exposures to asbestos, chromium, nickel, arsenic, radon, soot, or tar. Most patients with lung cancer do not have symptoms in the early stages of their disease. However, some Commonly associated symptoms of lung cancer are chest pain or discomfort, a cough that won't go away, a cough that produces blood, which, which, which we call hemoptysis, trouble breathing, wheezing, unexplained weight loss, unexplained loss of appetite, or unexplained fatigue. Cancer screening is designed to detect, detect cancer in patients with risk factors but without symptoms. Cancer screening is designed to detect the cancer in its earlier stages when it's most treatable. Several years ago, a study called the National Lung Screening Trial, or NLST, demonstrated that screening patients with CAT scans can reduce the risk of lung cancer uh, death by 20% in high-risk individuals. We determine uh, high-risk individuals as those who are current or former smokers aged 55 to 74 with a smoking history of greater than 30 pack years. Patients with symptoms of lung cancer and or suspicious findings on an x-ray or CAT scan may need further diagnostic tests. These tests may be performed to obtain tissue for diagnosis commonly referred to as a biopsy. Some patients with likely early stage lung cancer may be referred for surgery without a diagnostic biopsy.
One invasive diagnostic test which is commonly used is a bronchoscopy. This uses a lighted telescope which is commonly inserted through either the mouth or the nose to examine the major airways for tumor. Uh, this does allow for biopsy if necessary. Bronchoscopy is most useful for central tumors involving major airways. It is usually uh, done given IV sedation uh, and is commonly re uh, performed as an outpatient. Another invasive diagnostic test which may be necessary is a needle biopsy or FNA. This is usually done under guidance of a CAT scan. This is uh, most useful for peripheral tumors which are closer to the surface of the lung. This is usually performed using IV sedation and local anesthetic and is also usually an outpatient procedure. There are two major types of lung cancer. Non-small cell lung cancer is the most common type and represents approximately 85% of all lung cancers. The most common subtypes of non-small cell lung cancer are adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Non-small cell lung cancers are commonly treated with surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or a combination of these depending on the stage or extent of spread of the tumor. The second major type of lung cancer is small cell lung cancer. This represents approximately 15% of all lung cancers. Small cell cancers tend to be more aggressive than non-small cell lung cancers. They tend to spread earlier and they're usually treated without surgery, usually using a combination of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Cancer stage refers to the size and extent of spread of the tumor. Stage is important for determining options and prognosis. Stage is determined using a combination of non-invasive tests such as x-rays and sometimes invasive tests commonly referred to as endoscopies or biopsies. These are some commonly performed tests which may be used to determine the stage of the lung cancer. A CT scan of the chest and abdomen are commonly performed. This provides detailed pictures of the lung tumor and the lung anatomy and is important for staging and treatment planning. Secondly, a PET scan is usually obtained. This utilizes radioactive sugar to determine where cancer cells are present in the body. Because cancer cells use sugar rapidly, uh, we are able to identify the location of the cancer cells with this scan. It's important for identifying spread to lymph nodes or other organs. In our, an MRI scan of the brain may be necess necessary to determine if the tumor has spread to the brain. And finally, pulmonary function tests are an important evaluation to determine lung and breathing capacities. And these are particularly important to determine if surgery is possible. This is a very simplified representation of the staging of lung cancer. Stage 1 cancers are small tumors which are confined to the lung without spread to lymph nodes. Stage 2 cancers are larger or more locally advanced tumors within the lung or those that involve local lymph nodes. Stage 3 cancers are tumors which involve lymph nodes in the center of the chest which we call me the mediastinum. And finally, stage 4 tumors have spread via the bloodstream to other organs or have metastasized. As I mentioned earlier, most patients do not have symptoms of lung cancer until their cancer is in an advanced stage. The pie chart on the left demonstrates this uh, with approximately 60% of patients presenting with advanced lung cancer and a minority of patients presenting with either localized or regional disease. This is unfortunate. As you can see from the bar graph on the right, patients with localized and regional disease have a much better five-year relative survival with treatment as opposed to those with distant disease.
This is a generalized overview of the preferred treatment of lung cancer according to stage. For stage 1 lung cancers, surgery is the gold standard treatment. For patients who are not healthy enough to undergo lung cancer surgery, radiation therapy is generally used. Surgery is also the gold standard treatment for stage uh, 2 lung cancers, usually followed by chemotherapy after recovery from surgery. Again, for patients who cannot have surgery, combined chemotherapy and radiation therapy are typically used for stage 2 cancers. For stage 3 cancers, the preferred treatment is controversial. The treatment usually involves a combination of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Surgery sometimes plays a role in combination with chemotherapy and radiation. And for patients with advanced stage 4 cancer, chemotherapy and our best supportive care is usually the treatment. This picture demonstrates the location of lymph nodes surrounding the airways and within the lung. Lymph node involvement is very important for determining the stage of the cancer. CAT scans and PET, PET scans can accurately determine if nodes are negative in most cases. However, invasive, invasive testing is sometimes necessary. An endoscopic ultrasound is a procedure to sample lymph nodes. This may be termed an endobronchial ultrasound or EBUS if the scope is inserted through the airway or an endoscopic ultrasound or EUS if the scope is inserted through the esophagus. This allows for needle aspiration or biopsy of nearby lymph nodes. This procedure is typically performed under IV uh, sedation or general anesthesia depending on the patient and is often done as an outpatient. Mediastinoscopy is a surgical procedure which is often performed at the time of lung surgery. This is performed through a small neck incision and allows for biopsy of lymph nodes near the trachea or windpipe. Rapid on-site pathologic review of the lymph node specimens allows the surgeon to decide whether to proceed with lung surgery at the time of that general anesthetic. Upon referral to a lung cancer surgeon, you will undergo an extensive pre-surgical assessment to determine if surgery is the correct treatment for you. This will include a medical history and physical examination, a heart history and risk stratification, which includes an EKG in all patients, and an echocardiogram or stress test in some patients. All patients undergo pulmonary function testing, which entails breathing tests performed by a pulmonologist or a medical lung specialist. This measures the breathing capacity to determine the degree of underlying lung disease, such as emphysema. Pulmonary function testing allows surgeons to determine if lung tissue can be removed surgically, and if so, how much. We insist that all patients stop smoking for at least two to three weeks prior to surgery. Advanced age alone is not a reason to deny surgery or other treatments, as most of our patients are six or 60 years of age or older. Despite advances in non-surgical ther therapies, surgery remains the most effective treatment for localized non-small cell lung cancer. Currently, most lung cancer operations in the United States are performed by general surgeons or heart surgeons who also perform lung surgery. Approximately 25% are performed by board-certified cardiothoracic surgeons with a special interest and specialized training in lung cancer surgery, which we call general thoracic surgeons. Not surprisingly, most lung operations are performed by thoracotomy or open surgery. Minimally invasive lung surgery continues to, involve, uh, to evolve. This is often referred to as VATS or video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. And most lung surgeons now agree that VATS surgery should be the standard of care for most patients with early lung cancer, i.e. those with stages one and two. A number of studies have demonstrated that lung cancer surgery performed by thoracic surgeons have decreased complications in the short term and improved cancer survival in the long term.
I'd like to briefly discuss the common procedures performed for lung cancer surgery. Lobectomy involves removal of the lobe of the lung which contains the tumor. This is the gold standard operation for most lung cancers. The blood vessels, including the artery and vein branches, as well as the airway branches to that lobe of the lung are individually divided. This, in, this ensures removal of lymph vessels and lymph nodes within that lobe of the lung. At the same operation, we also perform a systema systematic dissection and removal of lymph nodes from the same side of the chest. A pneumonectomy entails removal of an entire lung. Historically, this was a commonplace operation for lung cancer. Currently, it's occasionally required for lung cancer. However, specialized techniques, which are available to lung surgeons, often allow for sparing of lung tissue and avoidance of a pneumonectomy. Finally, a wedge resection is an operation which is sometimes recommended for lung cancer. It is not based on lung anatomy. Rather, lung tissue is divided without attention to the location of the blood vessels or the airways. This removes a small portion of lung which contains the tumor. However, it pays no heed to lymph vessels or nodes within the lung tissue. The advantage of this operation is that it preserves lung tissue in patients with borderline lung function. The negative trade-off is that the cancer has a higher likelihood of recurring within the lung than with a lobectomy. VATS lobectomy is now my preferred approach to removing stage 1 and stage 2 lung cancers. The surgeon uses a lighted video camera to perform the operation. The picture on the left demonstrates the three small incisions which we utilize for placement of the camera and the surgical instruments. There are no rib retractors or rib spreading which are typically involved in an open thoracotomy which is seen in the picture on the right. There are a number of benefits to VATS lobectomy as opposed to open lobectomy. Those include decreased pain, decreased surgical complications, decreased need for blood transfusion, a decreased length of hospital stay, faster recovery at home. VATS lobectomy utilizes the same principles of anatomic resection and individual division of the vessels and airways as the open lobectomy techniques. It provides an equivalent removal of lung tissue and lymph nodes and has equivalent outcomes with regard to cancer recurrence and survival. <coughs> At the time of lung surgery, a drainage tube is left within the chest. This tube is typically in place for two to three days. Soon after the tube is removed, discharge from the hospital is possible, usually within three days. Patients are out of bed the evening of or the morning after surgery and a respiratory therapist assists the patient in breathing and coughing exercises to help avoid pneumonia after surgery. Postoperative office visit with the surgeon will be scheduled approximately three weeks after lung surgery. In the long term, lung cancer survivors are at increased risk for cancer recurrence or new lung cancers. As such, routine surveillance is performed by obtaining an x-ray or a CAT scan every three to six months for at least five years. An office visit with the surgeon is typically scheduled around the same time of each x-ray examination. At the Memorial Hermann Cancer Centers, we provide comprehensive lung cancer care. We routinely have multidisciplinary discussions or tumor boards to discuss lung cancer cases. Your lung cancer team may include a thoracic or lung surgeon, a medical lung specialist or pulmonologist, a medical oncologist, or a radiation oncologist. In summary, lung cancer is the leading cancer killer in the United States. Lung cancer may be detected earlier by screening high-risk patients with CAT scans. 
Early lung cancers are best treated with surgery. Minimally invasive or BATS surgery for lung cancer is available and has many advantages over traditional open surgery performed by thoracotomy. Lung cancer is best managed by different specialists working together within a cancer center. For more information, please visit memorialherman.org slash lung cancer. And to schedule a lung cancer screening, call 713-704-3951. Thank you for viewing this brief discussion on lung cancer and lung cancer surgery. From the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston and Memorial Herman Hospital, I'm Dr. Philip Raskett.